Good morning and welcome back to World Talks here where every world matters on TVP World. I'm Diana Skaya. A developing story that has raised serious concerns both in the United States and the Middle East. Now, classified documents allegedly leaked from U.S. intelligence agencies suggest that Israel is preparing a potential military strike against Iran. Now, the leak has prompted an urgent investigation by the U.S. government, while Israeli officials have yet to comment on the revelations. The implications of this, of course, are significant, not just for Israel and Iran, but for regional stability and global security. And to help us unpack what this could mean, and more, we are joined by Ariel Chorev, historian from Tel Aviv University. Good morning, sir. So glad to have you here on uh, World Talks on TVP World here this morning. Good morning, Dana. Glad to be here. Sir, there's so much that we can tackle about uh, this entire conflict. I'm going to try to, let, let, let's go a little bit uh, in order. Let's start first about these two top secret documents that have reportedly been leaked now, based on, the, uh, based on monitor, monitoring, of course, from satellite imagery, other geospatial intelligence, now they're focusing on Israel's preparations relating to air-launched ballistic missiles, refueling aircraft, and covert long-range drone surveillance in Iran, and of course, elsewhere in the Middle East. Now, can you elaborate on these documents? What type of military preparations Israel uh, is making, and how credible are these leaks? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Uh, from what I have saw, uh, they're quite general in the way they de depict the, the, the whole uh, uh, future strike of Israel on Iran, which we know that will come. Uh, I think they, were, they are quite general, but still, you know, reveal all sorts of details that are, uh, from an Israeli point of view, are uh, concerning. That, that, you know, the fact that something like this is being leaked, obviously, from someone with an interest. And uh, I think, but I really think that the, the, the most serious thing is that it damages the uh, <clears throat> trust between the two establishments, the, the two security establishments, the Israeli one and the American ones, that, you know, the, Israel, the, the Americans, not at the first time, complained during this war about the fact that Israel notified them uh, just a short while before a, a certain attack. And uh, the, the reason was exactly like this, you know, to keep things uh, secret. It's not that w Israel doesn't trust the, the American, it, it trusts a lot. I mean, nobody supports Israel as the American do, and uh, obviously the, the Israelis are grateful for it. but. These leaks are extremely, uh, you know, uh, a matter of concern to, to us. And uh, this is why even the president himself, President Biden, is involved in, in inquiring uh, into these uh, leaks. Sir, but how could this leak impact the possible relationship or the future relationship between the U.S. Uh, and Israel? I mean, you're mentioning the key, uh, the key word there, trust. Exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, maybe the uh, the American will accept the fact that, given uh, what happened, maybe uh, the two countries should keep it even. You know, when, when things like that happened, the the people who are who will be partners uh, of a certain secret would be uh, it, it would be a much limited uh, group, uh, and not all the the you know all the officials that are involved in it. For example. Uh, because uh, the, the Americans understand very well that trust is, is crucial here. And if we trust the American, we want to make sure that th something like that uh, can't ha happen. And of course, obviously, the American needs to find and to show it to the Israelis, to find the ones who are uh, in charge of uh, this uh, leak and, of course, to punish them uh, severely. Uh, Aral, let's talk about Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, retaliation plans. I mean, from what it looks like, of course, post-October 7, and now, uh, especially with most of these top Hamas chiefs uh, completely eliminated by, by Israel, what is his uh, strategy 
What can you tell us about that? What is his retaliation plans and his strategy? I mean, you're talking, you, you mentioned you don't know when, but what can we expect? I mean, we can just imagine the fear that even Israelis inside the countries are talking about because, you know, Netanyahu retaliates and then Israelis fear that Iran will go back and retaliate again. How can you explain this? Well, uh, regarding Iran, uh, the, the, the Israelis, uh, and personally, I've supported the same, uh, the same kind of uh, thinking as a commentator uh, all over the media. I said the Israeli uh, strategy should be within, uh, uh, within a plan or a strategy that uh, will lead eventually to the destruction of their uh, nuclear uh, plan. Uh, the nuclear uh, project of Iran is a major threat on the safety of Israel and, uh, as a matter of fact, the safety of the world. And I think anything that we will do, any retaliation to, to the Iranian uh, 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 181 uh, missiles uh, launched uh, last month should be within a strategy that doesn't see it as as a, as a, a tit for tot kind of a mm -hmm. um, uh, you know response, but rather as a as a strategy that will eventually lead to to halting the, the Iranian project. And it's a little bit what we're seeing now with. Uh... Uh, with uh, the Israeli uh, aerial strikes in Lebanon, uh, in, in Beirut. Now, you just mentioned that. Now, on the topic of uh, Lebanon, let's focus on that for a bit. Israel has, has, has expanded its campaign to particularly, like you mentioned, right, dis dismantle not only Iran, but of course Iran's proxies. Um, and after its strike, now, with what the IDF claims to have found is pretty striking. I want us to take a listen uh, for a moment to IDF spokesperson uh, Daniel Hagari and what he had to say. The Israeli Air Force carried out a series of precise strikes on these Hezbollah financial strongholds. One of our main targets last night was an underground vault with millions of dollars in cash and gold. The money was being used to finance Hezbollah's attacks on Israel. This vault was deliberately located under a residential building. Our strikes will degrade Hezbollah's ability to finance its attacks on Israelis. The entrance is located in the Al Mahdi building and the exit is located in the Al Sahal Center building. This is the bunker. It contains rooms, beds, and infrastructure for long stays and the ability to direct combat from underground. Hezbollah built this bunker directly underneath this hospital. There are hundreds of millions of dollars in cash and gold inside the bunker right now. I'm calling on the Lebanese government, Lebanese authorities, and the international organizations. Don't. Don't allow Hezbollah to use the money for terror and to attack Israel. Mr. Harrell, this is absolutely uh, appalling. Now, if what the IDF says is true, that Hezbollah is hiding $500 million in cash uh, and in gold, and we're not talking just about uh, ammunition here, how is this going to impact uh, the, the region further? And of course, Hezbollah's relations with Lebanon uh, and its global standing. Oh, it's much more than $500 million, Diana. It's only in that building, only in that bunker under the, the El Sahel Hospital, there are half a billion dollars in gold and other materials. Uh, actually, Israel attacked something like 31 branches of Hezbollah's bank, which is out of the SWIFT, out of the, the world system, which allowed Iran to finance uh, Hezbollah without, you know, any international monitoring and other factors, other uh, players. So they have much more than half a billion uh, dollars stashed in all sorts of uh, places around uh, Lebanon. And many of them were indeed destroyed yesterday with the Israeli attack. And uh, the, I, I, the, the hospital was not attacked. And uh, Daniel Agari emphasized it. It was not attacked because it's a hospital. But 
it's a, it of course emphasized to us the ways the, these terrorists are uh, both using you know human shields to protect their assets and uh, you know using this money for for uh, uh, fighting Israel purposes of terror instead of uh, you know taking care of their uh, f- their country welfare and uh, so th- this money could be used for I assure you for many other purposes that were far better uh, than what uh, it was supposed to be. Let me uh, link this a little bit to uh, the recent discovery by Israel, reports of seven Jewish Israelis who emigrated from Azerbaijan, correct me if I'm wrong, that were arrested recently for spying on Iran on security figures, right, an IDF basis. Um, They've apparently carried out those 600 missions over two years. Um, I don't know if there there is a link here with this Hezbollah uh, cash stack there, but also reports are that these seven Jewish uh, Azeri Israelis were uh, given uh, the cash by uh, the cash was delivered to them by Russian tourists. Sir, what is Russia's role in this conflict? Because clearly it is very stated. I mean, you have Russian tourists coming in and paying them this money. What is Russia's role? Well, I know that the Iranians were communicating uh, with them uh, uh, in Russian. They they were speaking Russian to them. They were not speaking Hebrew or any other language because all of these uh, uh, seven, two of them are minors, uh, uh, were uh, immigrants from uh, ex-Soviet Union uh, countries, especially from uh, Azerbaijan. And uh, so they were communicating on Russian maybe also using uh, Russians as, as you know, as uh, case officers to communicate with them as agents. I don't know, but, but it, it is an extremely severe uh, um, issue uh, of uh, both, uh, tr- uh, you know, uh, cases of, uh, of, um, of uh, uh, traitors and uh, yeah, uh, during a war which is uh, in Israel, it's, uh, it, it usually uh, gets the, the highest or the most severe punishment for it, at least by law. I don't remember anyone got the penalty for it, although it is in the law, but it is an extremely severe one. Thank you so much, Arel Chorev, a historian at Tel Aviv University, for breaking down to us this complex uh, issue that's taking over the Middle East. Thank you for being with us here on World Talks on TV. Sure. World. Thank you, Diana. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. And that's all for this edition of World Talks here on TVP World. Up next, more news. Stay tuned.